If you don't already know, CentOS 7 is going end of life June 30th, 2024, which is bad news for a lot of companies, organizations, and individual hobbyists. You yourself may be wondering, what are you going to do? The good news is that there's actually alternatives out there, and you can actually migrate directly to them. Now, I'm not going to be covering those alternatives in this video, but I just want to let you know that they are out there so you can do your own independent research before migrating. Now, in this particular video, I'm going to be introducing you to the alternative Rocky Linux, which is an alternative to Red Hat Enterprise Linux that was started with the involvement of Gregory Kurtzer, who was one of the original founders of the CentOS project. Now, it may seem pretty daunting to migrate from one Linux distribution to another, but I can assure you it's actually pretty easy. This is B from Tay Talk Tech, and today I'm going to show you how to migrate from CentOS 7 to Rocky Linux. Stick around. I have a favor to ask. If you like this type of video and want to see more content like it, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. Also, give this video a like if you like it. Let me know what you liked, didn't like, or if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or emotional outbursts down in the comments below. And lastly, make sure to stick around all the way to the end to get the most out of this video. Let's do this thing. All right, so as I introduced in the intro to this video, the distribution that we're going to be migrating from CentOS to is going to be Rocky Linux, specifically version 8. Now, Rocky Linux uh, version 8 is going to be supported until May 31st, 2029, so you still got a little over five years of support left on that. Now, if you're interested uh, in upgrading to, from Rocky 8 to 9, I will be doing a follow-up video actually going over that process, so be on the lookout for that if that is what you're looking for. Now, the first thing that we want to go ahead and do, I mean, just a second here, I'm going to go ahead and shrink my face down. I'm getting my desktop organized here. I thought I had it more organized than I did. Okay, we're going to shrink my face down here. Okay. Yeah, so the first thing that we're going to want to talk about here is going to be backing up your system. Now, I'm not going to be showing you how to back up your system, but I, that's the first thing that you're going to want to start with if you're going through this process. Now, if you bring your attention to the actual uh, screen that I've got here, you can see that we ran the cat Etsy OS tack release command, which is just going to go ahead and open and basically print this output from this, this file right here, which gives us information on the Linux distribution that we're running. This works for pretty much every distribution out there. So um, this is a command that I use, you know, anytime that I'm getting myself familiar with a Linux system. Now, um, again, going back to it, make sure you back up your, any, any mission critical information files, configuration files, anything like that, that you're going to need before jumping into this process, you have been warned. So let's go ahead and come in here. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and clear this out. We're going to do a sudo. And one of the things you'll notice here is that I am actually signed in as a root user, but I am using the sudo commands. If you're, if you're signing as root, you don't need to run the sudo commands, but I am doing that just because a lot of folks out there don't actually have, uh, don't set it up their system where they're using the root account. So I wanted to be able to go ahead and show you um, what those commands are here in the video. So we're going to do sudo yum update, and we're going to do attack y. And basically what that um, what that TACY is doing is it's going and accepting any of the updates that are going to be made. So we don't have to sit there and go through the prompts. Mine is, yours may already be up to date. If your system's already up to date, you can go ahead and skip this step. But this is not. This is actually a fresh install of CentOS 7. So we're going to give it just a minute here. Let it do its thing. Okay, perfect. We've got it finished there. All right, so we've got the system up to date. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do a sudo reboot. This is not required, but um, I am using a virtual machine, so it acts a little finicky when I don't reboot it. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot it. Um, do this as um, as needed by your own individual system. So we're just going to do sudo reboot. We're going to give it just a minute here. Now, i got to make sure that it doesn't uh, change my change my IP address because it's been it's been changing my IP address between two different ones and I'm just like ah. so let's go ahead and all right let's go ahead and do that okay yep I kept the password the same I'm sorry the uh, IP address the same we're going to clear that out okay perfect we've got that rebooted I typically also like to reboot my systems after updates just to make sure that everything was applied um, completely and correctly. Now, 
what we're going to do is we're going to do another install command. And what this install command is going to do is it's going to install, install a repository so we can go ahead and actually have access to everything that we're going to need to actually make the migration. So we're going to do that here. Should be pretty quick. You can also do a tack Y at the end of this. Perfect. We've got that repository added. So now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go ahead and install some packages from that repository. Oops. All right, there we go. And I know I went through that really quick, so I'm going to actually go back to that command once this is done installing. So I apologize about that. I, I hit the button a little bit faster than um, than I intended to. So let's go ahead and clear this out. We're going to come back up here. So we're installing these two programs right here. These applications is going to be Liap uh, TAC Upgrade and then Liap TAC Data TAC Rocky. And the one before that, the repository, is going to be this one right here. All right, so we're going to do a sudo yum install HTTP, and then we're going to go ahead and put that in there, that link in there. And then same thing over here, sudo yum install liap tac upgrade, uh, liap tac data tac rocky. So, okay, cool. So we got those taken care of. Now, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go ahead and run through a basically like a pre-check. Now, this is going to look very, very similar to the actual migration, but I can promise you that if you run this command, even though it looks like the migration happened, it has not. So make sure that you don't um, prematurely, you know, do anything else. Um, it's making that assumption. So, and, and this this won't take too long. It'll it'll depend on the hardware that you have the server running on. You know, if you have it running on a Core 2 Duo um, and a hard drive sitting in a drawer somewhere, um, you know, that, that may take longer, but this, this doesn't take too long. In, in on my particular system and it's not a super powerful system the system that this uh this one's running on is it's got two virtual cores and four gigabytes of ram so it's nothing too too crazy but it is also running on ssd storage um because in that in in the in the server that i have this test this uh test server um running on is it's actually it's actually got you know i think it's got like 48 gigabytes of ram it's got an eight core 16 thread cpu and it's got two nvmes um, in there now, these are Gen three drives, so they're nothing like too like crazy fast, but they are um, but they are faster than a spinning hard drive. So just keep that in mind. So um, and, and sometimes it just takes a little while, just depending on your um, your system. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this just another second. If it doesn't uh, if it doesn't start finishing up here, uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and. Um, pause the video, come back, and then we'll we'll restart that process. It's it does this sometimes, um, and I think it's and I don't think it's anything that has to do with my system. I think it has to do more with the fact that it's a virtual machine, and sometimes they act goofy. So um, you know, so just be patient with it. Give it time as it's going through the stuff. As you know, there's stuff in the background that it's going to be doing updating and and things like that. And see, here we go. We can see it kind of making its moves. And what what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and tell us you know if everything passed or if there's any errors. Uh, what to do to go ahead and fix those errors. Now, I can I can already tell you there's going to be one error that's going to be present, and um, we'll get to that once I actually go once we actually get to the end. It should be finishing up here pretty quickly. Um, I know it's 199 different things, but it gets through those pretty fast. So let's go ahead and almost let it like I let it finish up because it's almost done here. Perfect. All right, so it, that part has been complete. It should be finishing up here. Okay, cool. So here we go. Now, two of the most common, two of the most common errors that I see when it comes to it is this one right here: inhibitor missing required answers in answer file, which I'll show you how to fix that here in just a second. And the other one is about the kernel version. That's why I restarted because I needed to go ahead and update the kernel version, and I, I just like doing it that way because there's nothing critical on this. Uh, so I wanted to go ahead and um, and just reboot it, so I it, it updates to the most recent kernel. All right, so let's go ahead and get around this. It's a really easy one here to go ahead and do that. I'm going to show this to you here. 
And again, that command, let me actually show you just so you have it here. That command to do the upgrade is sudo liap pre upgrade is going to be the actual command. So. All right, there we go. This is the command that we're actually going to be doing. It's another, it's a liap answer, and it's going to go ahead and do a section remove. <laughs> it's going to do that stuff right there. I'm not going to go ahead and read that out to you, but you can see it there. And it's a pretty quick thing. All right, perfect. Now, now that we've got that done, we're going to go ahead and start the actual upgrade. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we go. Uh, this will take probably about the same amount of time, maybe a little longer to go ahead and get to the upgrade. So don't, don't, don't worry if it takes a little bit of time. Uh, sometimes it'll it'll get to certain sections and it'll just kind of hang there for a little bit and then it'll just dip, dip, do nothing, do nothing, do nothing, do nothing, and then all of a sudden it's going to uh, it's going to make that uh, finish that whatever process it's working on. I'm gonna see if it doesn't take too long because if it doesn't take too long, then we can go ahead and just keep the video running. If it does take um, too long, then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and pause the video and uh, make sure that we come back once it's complete and we can see it's pretty much doing the same process you know of course it's different if you actually looked at the actual log output for this you would see lots of different stuff happening but you see a lot of the same stuff happening that's why i wanted to make sure that it was clarified that um, when you're running that pre-upgrade check to make sure that hey know that this is not the actual upgrade even though it may look kind of like it so see and there you go and it's checking just to make sure that nothing needs to be fixed I doubt it's going to need anything fixed because usually it'll, it'll let you know pretty quickly. But, oh, looks like it needed some more stuff here, so we're going to go ahead and let it do that. This does take a little bit of time, but you can see, though, even though we've been on here on the video, it's it's still not taking that long. And and I kind of like being able to do that. I know it's some of you may be like, ugh, you know, but I'm, I'm being able to show you this in real time, how long it's taking me, so you kind of have an idea of how long this is taking for it to actually finish up. It's almost done. It's got like that one because it's got 457 of 458. Let's give it just a minute here. See, like and I, I told you sometimes it just hangs. It's just like, hey, I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> hang out here for just a minute. And then I'm going to go ahead and kind of keep going when I, I got all the stuff that I need um, done. So that looks like it was some kind of uh, firmware. And then here it's running these checks. I do notice that it commonly gets kind of hung up here and then it takes a little while to actually progress. Hopefully you can see my, you should be able to see my, yeah, you can see my mouse clicker right here. It, it'll, like once you get to kind of like this section is it'll just kind of sit there and sit there and sit there. Um, and you're just gonna be like, what's happening? Um, so what I'm gonna do is because this is just dragging on a little longer than I would like, I'm gonna go ahead and, whoops. That is definitely not what we want there. So let's go ahead and pause that. So need a Java update here for my MacBook. Uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and pause the video and we'll come back once everything has finished up. All right. It actually didn't take too much longer after I paused the video. So we can actually see here that it's given us full green. We don't have any red like we did last time. And it says answer file has been generated at that location right there. So yeah, so what we need to go ahead and do now is just do a sudo reboot. Oops. All right, we're gonna go ahead and let it do its thing. Hopefully it doesn't change my, my uh, IP address on it again. If it does, I know what it changes it to, so. It's okay, and it's pretty quick to reboot as well. Well, actually, let me let me. Oh, that's fine. We can show that. Yeah, this is just my little thing here. Where's my VNC viewer? There we go. Let me just show this to you here. I'm showing this to you because you can kind of see what it's going through here on this end. As you can see, it's 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 gonna that first reboot is going to take a little while, so just be patient with it. It is completely normal for it to take time after the after the install. And that's what we can actually see right here going on is that we've got um, all the updates. Because one of the things that I, I, I learned really early on when I was testing this is that is I would try to go back in and it's like, well, hey, man, like I can't connect to anything, right? Like, so I would try this or its other IP address. 
which is 99, and it's not, it didn't connect, it wouldn't connect to either of them, but it's because it was still running all of these updates here. So it's going to run through quite a bit of things, even after you do the reboot, because it's, you know, it's got to take care of everything. It's got to make sure everything is going to be updated to version eight and all of the correct packages and, and all that good stuff. So that's why it does take a while. Now I'm going to go ahead and pause the video again, let it finish up this process, and then we will go ahead and uh, continue. All right, so it finished up those updates here. And what's going to happen is it's actually going to reboot again. And we can see it actually doing that again. It actually took it out. And then I had to actually move. It opened it up. It like It opened up the window again, but it was on another screen. So I had to bring it back over and it did it again. So here we can see that it's, you know, doing all of its, all its normal stuff now. And let's give it just a second here. There we go. Oops, that's not the right, that's not the right one. There we go. Okay, let's clear this out, and we're going to run that cat command one more time, cat etsy os tack release, and there we go. The, yep, we got it here, Rocky name, Rocky Linux version 8.9, which is the current version. Yeah, we got everything there. So yeah, you've successfully migrated from CentOS 7 to Rocky Linux 8. Uh, who knew it could be that easy? <laughs> but uh, make sure you check out the other video from my channel that's popping up on the screen. Remember, mistakes make you better, so keep on making them. Thank you so much for watching this video, and have a great day.